in preparation for Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad's visit to New York for the United Nations General Assembly, the International Campaign for Human Rights in Iran organized a panel discussion to address the ongoing human rights crisis in Iran, along with Human Rights Watch and the Nobel Women's Initiative. The issue is that we don't want Ahmadinejad to come to town and the entire debate be framed by him and his handlers who will be setting the uh, setting the agenda or the terms of interviews such that he will only be asked about the nuclear issue, Holocaust, and the usual circus that he brings to town with him. The press conference coincided with the release of a reporter's guide to interviewing Iranian officials on human rights issues, published by the International Campaign for Human Rights in Iran. The panel included Nobel laureates Mirid Maguire and Shirin Abadi, Hadi Gayami of the International Campaign for Human Rights in Iran, Human Rights Watch's Iran researcher Farah Sanayi and its communication director Minky Warden. The panelists spoke about increasing pressure on human rights defenders, the situation of political prisoners, and the arbitrary arrests of activists. They also discussed the impact of sanctions and a possible military attack on the situation of human rights in Iran. Shirin Abadi said that the most urgent issue regarding human rights in Iran is the release of political prisoners. متهم میشه به اینکه از غرب خصوصا آمریکا میلیاردها دلار پول گرفته وکلای مدافع صرفا به خاطر دفاع از موکلینشون در دادگاه به زندان میافتند در اینجا یاد میبرم خانم نسرین ستوده که بسیاری از متهمان سیاسی رو در ایران در دادگاه دفاع میکرد خانم ستوده صرفاً به خاطر دفاع از موکلینش الان در زندان و تحت شدیدترین شکنجه هاست برای اینکه علیه خودش صحبت بکنه. Abadi also said that the situation for prisoners, specifically in the area of health and nutrition, has gotten worse. She said that many of those who are released from prison, usually on very heavy bail, have to go directly to the hospital. و متاسفانه آقای احمدی نژاد و سایر دولتمردان ایرانی در سازمان ملل و مجامع عمومی که حاضر میشن مدعی هستن که ایران آزادترین کشورهای دنیاست و من در اینجا پیشنهاد میکنم اگر آقای احمدی نژاد معتقده که ایران آزادترین کشور دنیاست اجازه بدهد پزشکان بدون مرز بروند به زندان و از زندانیان سیاسی معاینه پزشکی بکنند و من خواهشم از سازمان ملل متحد و نهادهای بین المللی و همچنین سرار ممالکی که در گفتگو با ایران هستند آن است که به این مسئله اشاره کنند و مسئله حقوق بشر مانند May Reed McGuire, who was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1976, also asked the nation states to put the issue of human rights in Iran on the top of their agenda. She criticized the use of executions and stoning in Iran. Now, this kind of um, punishment and cruelty is quite barbaric. I mean, it's just unbelievable that a government can accuse somebody of alleged adultery and then take them out, bury them up to their head in a sand pit, and then stone them to death. I mean, no matter who we are and no matter what part of the world, we have to say this is not acceptable in an allegedly civilized world. So we call for the abolition of the death penalty. The UN has called for governments who have the death penalty to have a moratorium on the death penalty. We call on Iran to uh, have a moratorium on the death penalty. We call on those who have been uh, accused of this uh, alleged crime of adultery to be released. The Iranian people are facing uh, 
a tremendous international and domestic crisis. Uh, since the disputed election of last June, the Iranian government has not hesitated from committing uh, the most atrocious crimes against its own citizens, ranging from uh, murder, torture, and rape of protesters to mass executions of uh, what uh, are said to be common criminals, but we have no information exactly who they are. And it is against that background that we're facing a nuclear standoff, uh, talk of military attack against Iran, and ongoing economic sanctions. Human Rights Watch researcher Faraz Sanayi also said that his organization and other organizations such as Amnesty International and the International Campaign for Human Rights in Iran cannot send their researchers to Iran due to the government's restrictions. He said that human rights defenders are at risk. And these are individuals who are often at the forefront of the democracy movement and the call for change in Iran, and are often the first ones to be targeted. Reporters in the audience raised questions and shared concerns. BBC Persian reporter Bahman Kalbasi questioned the practical dynamics of bringing human rights issues to the forefront. The question that comes to mind is that you, today you're calling for both media to pay attention, not be distracted by uh, nuclear uh, disagreements and ask the right question. Uh, you're also asking the governments to prioritize and talk about human rights. But really, uh, when it comes down to it, both of those institutions, the governments and the media, are really worried and care for their own interest and their constituency. What actions are you taking, uh, concrete actions, in the week that is coming that Mr. Ahmadinejad is here that really brings that this issue to the forefront. But certainly what we're doing here right now is raising awareness, making arguments, and giving reason why in the upcoming week the focus of both governments and media should be on human rights. Uh, secondly, all of our organizations are involved in very intensive advocacy uh, all over from Brazil to South Africa. Uh, to uh, Canada, to Europe, uh, arguing that the upcoming uh, General Assembly session should include a very rigorous discussion of human rights situation in Iran and putting in place a special mechanism that we have been discussing. And uh, of course, by just disseminating information, raising awareness, and um, meeting with various governments, uh, all these organizations will continue to make this argument. The issue is that we don't want Ahmadinejad to come to town and the entire debate be framed by him and his handlers who will be setting the, uh, setting the agenda or the terms of interviews such that he will only be asked about the nuclear issue, Holocaust, and the usual circus that he brings to town with him. And we will continue to do what we're doing today throughout the week next week. Newsweek correspondent Maziar Bahari, who spent 118 days inside Evan Prison after the 2009 elections, asked another question. The, uh, there are lots of talks here. Uh, I mean, all around the world about an imminent attack of the U.S. or Israel to stop, destroy, or to delay Iranian nuclear program. What do you think will happen to the human rights situation in Iran if such an attack happens? And the second question is that if Iran reaches a nuclear bomb, don't you think that it's going to give it confidence uh, in order to abuse human rights? من تصور نمی کنم آمریکا در شرایطی باشد که بتواند جنگ دیگری رو شروع کنه آمریکا به میزان کافی در افغانستان و در عراق درگیر شده و قدرت جنگ دیگه ای رو نداره اسرائیل هم قدرت حمله به ایران رو نداره برای اینکه میدونه حمله به ایران باعث عواقب بسیار بدی براش خواهد بود اما اگر شما روزنامه های ایران رو نگاه کنید دامن صحبت از این است که ممکنه به ایران حمله بشه این حرف ها رو دولت میزنه برای اینکه توجه مردم رو از زندانیان سیاسی و نقض حقوق بشر معطوف بکنه منصرف بکنه و با این ترتیب دولت میخواد احساسات ناسیونالیستی رو مردم رو به نفع خودش تحریک بکنه Another question addressed how people and organizations can defend human rights without interfering in domestic affairs. How can you talk about human rights without interfering in Iranian affairs? Well, that's exactly the line that Iranian government 
uh, that you're interfering in internal affairs. Uh, well, you're not. You're, you're all asking is that Iran respect international obligations, treaties that it has voluntarily signed. Not only Iran has signed them, 99%, pretty much 100% of countries have signed. And Iranian government itself made concerns and protests based on those treaties. Iranian government goes around and talks about human rights issues in occupied territories, in Lebanon, in Europe, in Canada, in United States. So they are accepting that there is an international norm where people have obligations, government have obligations, and they have to respect them. And all you're doing is asking them for their own obligation. Secondly, interacting with Iranian activists is not as dangerous as you may have said. It is true that Nasser Institute is in jail, Ahmad Qabil is in jail, but they and many other people continue to speak out, to want the outside world to know. They want your organization to know about their plight and they want to provide information and they're willing to put up with the dangers of it.